In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Dither animation like this. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create these dithered animations for yourself using Adobe After Effects and software called Dither Boy. You can follow along with any image or any animation that you've prepared, but if you wanna follow along using the animation that I created myself, you can find the project files on my Patreon. Now, without any further ado, let's dive straight into the tutorial. All right, this is the main render that I used for this. And like I said, you can basically follow along using any other video video or animation that you've created. I'm going to show you how I created an animation based on this image alone. So in order to do that, we're going to open up After Effects and we're going to create a new composition. And the size is of course, just whatever you are using. But for me, it's 3000 by 3000 pixels. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to drop in my composition here. So the first thing that we want to do, our animation is five seconds long. And in that animation, I want to blur this composition a little bit and then unblur it again. So the way we're going to do that is with a Gaussian blur. So under Effects and Presets, search for Gaussian blur and drag and drop it onto your composition and we'll turn this to 50 pixels. I'm going to click on the stopwatch to animate it and let's move our slider all the way up to two and a half seconds which for me is 215 because my frame rate is 30 frames per second and now I'm going to enter in zero and I'm going to move my slider all the way to the right and turn it back to 50 which results in this animation defocusing and focusing in again. I'm going to lower the preview quality a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier and the next thing you want to do is go to the composition here click on the s button on your keyboard which brings up the scale and we'll make this a little bit smaller i'm going to turn this to 90 percent click on the stopwatch again to make an animation move the slider to the middle and make it 100 and i'm going to move the cursor all the way to the end again and make it 90 again and this kind of makes it look like the composition is getting in and out of focus as you can see i'm going to drag in the same composition again in the background and as you can see my composition has a black background and of course that's maybe not the case in your uh, render or image or whatever you're using but for me it is and i'm going to change the blend mode to add and if you cannot really see that then all you have to do is right click go to columns and then click on modes and this will bring up the blend modes for every single one of your layers in after effects anyways i'm going to scale this up to 250 percent and the first thing that we're going to animate is the opacity which you can bring up with the letter t on your keyboard the t is for transparency i think and i'm going to click on zero which makes it completely invisible and we're going to make it fully visible again in the end also going to add a gaussian blur to this 150 pixels and we're going to animate this again click on the stopwatch you know the drill by now move it to the middle of the composition. We're gonna turn this to zero. And then at the end, we're gonna turn it all the way back up to 150. So let's take a look at what we have so far. All right, the next thing is I wanna kinda like move the background around a little bit. And we're gonna do that with a turbulent displace effect. So I'm gonna drop this onto our composition here. I'm gonna actually move that above the Gaussian blur so that the Gaussian blur also blurs this effect. I'm gonna turn the amount to 150. And again, click on the stopwatch. Go back to zero and go back to the end and turn it into 150 again. And as you can see, there's now like some slight movement in the background as well, like some morphing. And with all of these elements selected, so I'm going to select both of my layers here. Click on the letters U on my keyboard, which brings up all of the keyframes. I'm going to select all of them. Before we do that, actually, what I want to do is click on the Gaussian blur here and move that one to two seconds and then move my cursor to three seconds and paste that in here. And this is just so that the composition is sharp for a little while longer in the middle of the animation here. And now we want to select all of our keyframes. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard to select the other ones here in the bottom. And I'm going to press F9 on my keyboard, which brings up the easy ease. And now it's just a little bit smoother in terms of easing of the animations, as we can see here in our graph. So the next thing that you want to do is export this. So we're going to go to file, export, add to Adobe Media and Code Queue. And one important note here is that you want to export this, select a folder where you want to just export it. And one thing that's 
fairly important for this is that you want to click on a JPEG here. You want to export this as a JPEG, so not as a full video. You actually can, but for me, this is a little bit easier, I guess. So now we want to run this. And while this is running, we're going to open up Ditherboy. And here you can see what I've been working on. So full disclosure, I got Ditherboy for free by Studio AAA. It is paid software. It's not that expensive. You buy it once and then you'll get a lifetime free update. So it's not subscription based. And I just think that it's really easy, convenient software. Software. It sped up my workflow a lot and it helps me create cooler stuff. So that's why I wanted to do a couple of tutorials on it to share with you guys some really interesting features of this software. If you want to get it for yourself, there's a link in the description down below. But yeah, I just wanted to say I'm not being sponsored to create this video. I'm not being paid in order to show this to you guys. The only thing that I got is this software for free. What we want to do is go to import and go to the folder that we used. And rather than getting the first frame in here, I actually want to go to the middle and click on frame number 75 because that's around where everything is a little more sharp. We'll click on OK. So for the style, we want to go with Sierra. We want to have the scale around 5. The contrast, we want to up a little bit to like 60 or something. The depth, we can up this to like 5 or 6. The luminance threshold can be a little bit higher and this makes so that we have a little bit more of that dithering going on. And then we want to lower the midtones and up the highlights ever so slightly to have that much more contrast in here like this. So it's pretty cool now. I like it where the lighting is really bouncing off of these things. So what I want to do is play around with the depth a little bit more because this will add in more colors, you can see. So if the colors aren't popping up for you, all you need to do is go to palettes and palette that I I got was abstract and then low ammonia and as you can see there's a ton of palettes to choose from here you can also do your own custom palettes if i'm not mistaken i haven't really gone around doing that but i actually am going to just look into creating a tutorial for you guys if you want that but i actually really like this here i think i want to lower the depth to six just to have it a little bit more lo-fi and now all we need to do is click on batch here select folder and then we're going to go to the folder where we have all of our frames, which is animated frames. And we're going to select this and click on yes. And since our composition is quite large, it will take a while to process this, I think. If you have smaller images, it's actually going really, really fast. I'm also not really sure why I rendered this in 3000 by 3000 pixels. But for the people on Patreon who want to do something with this 3D composition, feel free to do so. It will be available on my $1 tier and the full project files for this as well as the After Effects files will be available on the normal Dreadlabs Insider tier, which is five bucks a month. And while we're waiting, let me just explain to you why I have this Patreon ready. Uh, because basically, really, really difficult to maintain a full income out of creating free tutorials for you guys every single week. That's why I also have a web shop where you can buy assets. I also have a Patreon page where you can find all of the project files from all of my tutorials, such as this one. And this is just to get a little bit of extra income because YouTube doesn't pay enough in order for me to make a living out of this and creating free tutorials for you guys on a weekly basis. So if you wanna support my channel and make me be able to give you guys more free tutorials on a weekly basis, consider supporting Dreadlabs by becoming a Patreon member, buying something off of the web shop. And if you don't have any budget at all, it also really helps to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you have not done that already, and you'll also never miss a future tutorial, of course. Leaving a comment down below, and this will actually boost my videos in the algorithm, of course, and hopefully grow my channel enough to the point where I can maintain a living out of YouTube. But for now, I'm kind of relying on you. So if you want to help me out, that would be really, really much appreciated. I'm done talking, so I'll just skip ahead when the batch processing is done and we'll get back to After Effects. All right, our batching is complete. So let's return to After Effects. I'm going to press Command or Control I on my keyboard and I'm going to go to Animated Frames. And as you can see, this boy made a separate folder called Batch Process. And this has every single individual frame in here. And I just want to say that this boy also can do this on full video files. Uh, the reason why I didn't do that is because my frame, the sharpest frame being in the middle. And from what I've seen is that this boy does process this, but then it showcases the first frame of the video for you. So that's the only reason why I chose to do it this way. But of course, you can also just simply dither the video. And I think it will also just export it as a video for you. I probably should have been a little bit more educated before I started this video, but I just want to showcase cool stuff to you guys. Anyways, let's import this. Make sure that import JPEG sequence here is checked and then click on import here. And we're going to make a new come from selection. And this is what Dither Boy did for us. So there you have it, guys. A fairly easy and quick way to create dope Dither visuals for yourself. If you want to get Dither Boy for yourself, feel free to get it by the link in the description down below. Because next to myself, there's another amazing creator called Jack from Studio AAA who has put his heart and soul into creating this software for you guys. Besides me being this creative content creator, there's a lot of other really cool people out there that you can also support 
by, of course, buying software such as Little Boy. And like I said, if you want to subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, feel free to click on that button down below and you'll never miss a future tutorial. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Red Labs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.